Okay, so good evening, uh, everyone, and welcome to uh, General Council uh, of March uh, 28th. I'm going to uh, first uh, begin by, I don't see anyone so far, by identifying any media on the line. Not seeing any representatives from either of our, oh, actually Donna Durek is joining in now, representative from the Turo Times. Uh, good evening, Donna. The next item I'm going to move to is the adoption of the agenda. So I know there was a, a few new business items. I'll look to that point. Michelle? I'll move. Moved by Michelle Seconder. <clears throat> Second by Sherry okay. Lynn. All in favor? Chief, I have uh... Oh, yeah, we uh, we included that piece, uh, Carrie. Thank you for uh, for reaching out to Tammy. We're just going to add that as part of, I believe, Lauren's presentation. Yes, right at the end. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, motion's carried. Uh, that being said, if we can allow into uh, the room, I believe we have two delegations this evening. The first uh, beginning uh, with Lauren Jones, our wildlife and management assistant. Uh, this is more of an ethics. We have Lauren uh, with us this evening. I did see her. Brooke, can you confirm? Oh, there she is. So good evening, Lauren. Uh, we're go going to deal with your first item, which is again, uh, for community's sake, the recommendation reads that six nations of the Grand River Elected Council approve the recommendation from the Ethics Committee to approve Lauren Jones's application to conduct research titled Birds and Bats Project. So I'm gonna pass the floor uh, over to Lauren at this time. Uh, and welcome her as well, and to give us just a high-level overview uh, to your um, application. So good evening, Lauren. Uh, hi, good evening. Um, can everybody hear me? My mic's always... Yes, bit... yes, we can. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, we, um, we completed some TEK studies with the approval of ethics uh, to bring in some community members to hopefully get a little bit of a baseline on the current status of aerial insectivores, birds and bats on the reserve. Um, these species are generally considered to be declining in number globally. And uh, unfortunately we don't have a whole lot of information on these species on the reserve itself. So the whole idea was to get a baseline for this component of the project, which would then be used to help inform um, the second and third part of this project, which we just got funding for, pleased to announce. Um, and, and yeah, hopefully that would uh, more properly inform where the starting point should be in terms of what species we should be assessing for and prioritizing and kind of uh, give a better overview <laughs> of what we're looking for and, and how to go about it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lauren, uh, for that. I'm going to open the floor up for any further questions, comments. Uh, first, beginning with Michelle. Um, this has been to ethics a couple times, so I'll move this. Okay, thank you for that, Michelle. We have a mover. It's moved by Michelle. Is there a seconder? I'll second, Nathan. Seconded by Nathan. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna move on to our next item. I don't believe our next delegation, we did have uh, Jeff Thomas coming in for a um, uh, internet First Nations cable update to the community. So we'll wait to see. I don't believe he's in the waiting room as of yet, um, but at this point in time, uh, want to uh, look to Lauren, I believe Paul Robertson is online. Uh, Carrie wanted to add this item again, if I'll maybe just pass to, uh, the floor over to Carrie just to introduce uh, this piece uh, and then look to uh, further conversation or rather discussion uh, and hopeful for a resolution to what we're going to be discussing. So over to you, Carrie. Yeah, Paul called me this, uh, this week to find, he hadn't heard from Six Nations to find, just to find out what was happening here, whether we were still interested in doing egg mass count. It's a little late, but it's still, it can still be done. And that's what Paul would be, would be doing. Um, I think him and Lauren kind of set up a date where 
potentially they he could come in and do the egg mass count and then map it and then from there it would become it would come back to council to find out if what what our stand is after that but he would probably bring in a recommendation yeah so paul could probably answer any questions that are Okay, thanks, uh, Nyama, for that intro, Carrie. Maybe at this point in time, I'll also just maybe shift over to Paul further to any additional comments. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, no, not really. Carrie explained it. I was just following up. Um, and really, part of it was to conduct egg mass. Well, well, we do know that there is some severe defoliation at the MNR mapped at the south end of the reserve um, heading towards the township of West Lincoln and Flamborough and Glanbrook. And so we've done egg masses in that part of the province and the peninsula. And so we were just following up one to confirm what the situation was on Six Nations to give you some good information if you wanted to act. And then also um, it would be a follow-up just really to look at the success. Um, and monitoring of the spraying that's taken place over the last two years. And part of it, we would uh, be looking at not only egg mass numbers, but also just general condition of trees and forest health across the, the reserve. Okay, thanks uh, Nyawa for that, Paul. And again, welcome. And so just for community's sake, this is in relation, if I'm uh, not mistaken, in relation to the gypsy moths uh, over yes. the years, uh, you have seen uh, low flying planes uh, over the territory. Uh, which uh, council has always um, maintained, uh, as we know, we are home to the largest Carolinian forest. So we do everything we do to protect uh, our green space. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, what Carrie was introducing this evening and further uh, Paul's additional comments. I just wanted to uh, maybe pause and look to see if Lauren, Lauren, uh, if you have any additional comments to this piece. Uh, I mean, not particularly we've we've worked with trees unlimited before in the past they've do obviously done spraying to control ldd moth in the past on the reserve um i i think that it's important to at least do the surveys to assess to see what the problem is and then make the decision based on all the information that we can possibly obtain so yeah <laughs> Okay, I appreciate your comments as well, Lauren. Thank you for that. And just uh, again, for an FYI, FYI, they are looking at this point, if we, if council is agreeable to uh, to move forward uh, with this uh, egg mass count, there is a quote, I believe that did come in. It would be a total cost of $6,676.50, uh, which would be uh, the resolution of approval needed. Um, and again, to move forward uh, with this. Paul, if you can, just for community's sake, in terms of the process, um, like obviously we know we do the spring. Uh, there are times I think uh, where we haven't been able to, or didn't necessarily have to do it every year. Um, it's, you know, there in the past have, I think um, been every two years, I think, but is, is it needed to do that? And th will this egg mass count help us in guiding to looking at if we even have to do that every year? Um, uh, yes, really, that we don't want to be doing it every year. So what we're trying to do is find out where it is. The infestation is severe on the territory and then provide some recommendations of what the acreage would be, um, oh, how severe it is and what the acreage would be if we were due to spray. Um, the quote, actually, I provided two quotes. Uh, one is, uh, they're about half the cost of what you said, so it's sort of around 3000 to go and do the field work over several days and then report back to Council on exactly what we found. And then if you decide to proceed with any spraying, there was a cost to organize the mapping and, and other services that we've done in the past, and that was about $3,000. So really... Okay, so... Oh, sorry, Paul. Nope, go ahead. I, I was just saying we're sort of jumping the gun. We're really only talking about doing the assessment and monitoring and determining whether or not it's actually necessary to do the next step. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's more of a twofold. So we'll, we'll maybe look for approval for the first uh, phase uh, to do that work. Uh, and then again, to your point of um, coming back um, to seeing if we necessarily need to do that. Uh, I do have a comment coming in. I first want to go over to Councillor Hazel. Uh, and then want to get to our uh, community comment. Hazel, you have the floor. 
Yes, I just wanted to make the comment that um, I think we should always be monitoring because we don't want to see our trees get as bad as they did a few years back where in the summer there was hardly any leaves at all. I think it should be a, a constant monitoring. And um, by doing that, you're probably going to save yourself money rather than having to deal with a real major problem if you don't keep monitoring. So that's my idea. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Hazel, for your comments. And again, there's just a comment coming in from the community in terms of uh, who tests the spray to see how effective it is. And I think that that might be what we're getting to in terms of this first first phase of the initiative. But Paul, that's a community question coming in. There would really be it's a good question. Um, there's really two opportunities. One is right after we're sprayed, um, we get landowner comments and feedback on the success of the spraying. And that is usually in early June, mid June, when the infestation and the caterpillars are feeding. And when we spray, um, whether or not the actual spray was affected and reduced those numbers. And then the second sort of assessment would be right now when the foliage is off in the fall through winter and we re-examine those areas and see if the number of egg masses have dropped and, and what are those numbers are. And then of course, we're looking for areas where there are new egg masses and buildup of infestation. Okay, Nyawa, Paul, for answering uh, that uh, community question. Uh, council at this point in time, so I will look to a uh, resolution if uh, that's the appetite of the council to move forward with the first stage of the egg mass count. Uh, and then again, <laughs> Uh, as Paula has alluded to the fact that it would be at a cost of $3,241 3, um, for the first stage, uh, and then would be coming back to for a council and where we can make a further de uh, decision for the second stage, uh, which is in relation for, to the mapping. Um, so is there a mover in secondary to that effect to do and move forward with the first stage of the egg mass count in relation to the gypsy moths? I'll make that a motion, Chief. Uh, Mark. Okay, I'm gonna, I, there's a motion. Yeah, I hear you, Melba. I'm just gonna go to a seconder first. We have a mover that's moved by Carrie. Is there a seconder? I'll second, I'll second it with a comment. Okay, oh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Hazel. I'm gonna go with Melba as a seconder and pass the floor yeah. over to her. Yeah, I wanted to say that I noticed a lot of nets at the end of summer. So I, I believe that it's necessary to follow through with the egg count. And also the spray, it needs to be uh, told to the community what are, what kind of spray they're gonna use because I've had a couple of elders in the past really concerned that it's harmful to people and possibly to animals. So if we could explain that to the community, that would be great. That's a, that's a really good point uh, now for that Melba. So maybe Paul, if you could shed some light just on that specific uh, question Melba has raised and maybe we also during when we do go to the um, you know the when the the planes are flying that we uh, further come up with the educational material uh, but Paul maybe just to and if you can answer uh, Melba's uh, uh, question well we can always improve communications with the public and so it's really working with Lauren's office and with your communication staff to make sure that once we know we're close to, well, first of all, um, to explain the product that we're using and that it's a biological insecticide and only affects Lepidopter. So the caterpillars themselves, it does not affect any other. Um, and today when I was sending back uh, the quote, I did include some other documents. There is literally hundreds of studies done on BT on the impact of non-targets. And um, there again, there can always be more, but, um, Certainly, all the indications show that the specific nature of BT, where it only affects the, the, the intestine of a caterpillar, that is the reason why it doesn't affect anything else. Um, BT is a natural occurring soil bacteria, so most organi organisms are exposed to it on a, on a daily basis anyways. Um, and then, of course, during pre-spraying and during spraying, certainly uh, having communications going out from uh, your offices on exactly what's going on um, so that uh, the community knows what's happening. Yes, we can always improve upon that and um, and we would strive to do that with uh, with your staff. 
I appreciate that. Now for that, Paul, further questions or comments? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing any at this point, so I will go to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. I'll move on that, Chief. Moved by Carrie. Seconder? Melba. Seconded by Melba to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Just one last question, Paul. What's the time frame on first stage? Uh, spraying wouldn't take place until around May, approximately May the 15th. We have to be ready for May the 15th with spraying probably around May the 21st. Okay, appreciate that. So when will, my, my question, I guess, when will you come back to get further uh, update or update and approval for second stage? Well, what we're going to do is Lauren is going to communicate to the to the community um, that we could be on the property over the over the next week or so. And so we'll set a specific she'll give enough time for um, people to receive the information and then uh, communicate back to her if they have any issues or have any specific areas they would like us to look. And then we were thinking around March the 14th, we would begin our our field work. It would only take a couple of days, so we would be done early the next week, um, April, and then April. by the end. I think you said sorry, March. yeah, that's April. <laughs> yes, April. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. April the fourteenth, and then about a week after, we could have a report back to council and meet at your next opportunity. Okay, that's that sounds good. So, uh, Lauren, and I'll leave it to Lauren and 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 Paul, yourself, Paul, as well as Caitlin from our comm side. Uh, to include uh, whatever we need to do to get the communication out. So do appreciate that. Uh, Paul, I look forward to you coming back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, Good night, everyone. Have a great evening. Okay, Council, we're going to continue moving along with our agenda. I do see uh, we have our next delegation, uh, Mr. Jeff Thomas. Uh, welcome, Jeff, to General Council. Uh, Nyawa for, uh, for coming in and providing us uh, with an update of where we are on our fiber optic, our, our internet uh, as in, and all that good stuff. So hopefully we got some good news because I know Jeff and I uh, and Tammy, we did a meet, uh, I believe a couple weeks ago now. Um, and we're also uh, moving forward on some items in terms of the political advocacy. Um, so Joe, over to you, Jeff. Hi, Mark. Uh, I got some music on here. Um... Is there uh -huh. anybody shutting it off? <laughs> uh, Whether it's on your end or my end, it's got to be your end. It's no, it's not. It's got to be on your computer. Are you working on a computer? Okay, um, You're jamming out. Yeah. Second here. <laughs> I don't know what. We, we can't hear any music at this point. Okay, music's gone, but so are you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> get, get you back here. The joys of technology. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what. So we could still see you fine as well as we could still hear you. Okay, well, I'll, I'll continue. Um, the good news that we got was we got our contract from the feds. So between Canada and First Nations Cable, um, we have a contract that's uh, going to be signed shortly. Um, the bad news of it all is, and I wasn't aware of this, is the fact that uh, we have to have a separate contract with Ontario, which was shocking. We weren't prepared for that. But I did contact them and they did tell me that they would have that contract over to us quickly. So I'm hoping um, within the next couple of weeks, but we have a lot of things that we can do. The big difference between now and last year at this time is we have the materials in stock. So um, what our game plan is, we're going to uh, build out to the ends of our line. That's what the guys are working on now. We're gonna run fiber right out to our existing systems. And uh, what that means is that gives the new system a, a point to connect to, to get back to our office. And um, that would have to be done anyway, 
but um, we have the materials for it. So like it, that's in the process now. Contractors are on standby. Everybody's here. We got uh, EDC and uh, RBC has consented to do the bridging loan. They've uh, raised it up to three quarters of a million dollars. There was an issue about uh, cash deficiency at the start of the program because um, we have to spend money first before we can collect any money. So in order to do that, we have to uh, create some invoices and there's a, they wouldn't go at the uh, monthly. It turns out they, the province wouldn't uh, do monthly. They would only do th like quarterly. So we're back to square one on that, but uh, this uh, overdraft is going to help us through that. So it should only be um, for the first part of uh, probably nine to 12 months. After that, everything else should be fine. Um, so that's where we're at with the uh, with, uh, feds and all it lies on the province side of things. Um, today I addressed that. I contacted a number of people from the province. Um, I'm also in the process of writing a, a letter to Larry Brock and uh, Will Obama, get them on board. Um, I talked to them, and uh, but we weren't aware. They weren't aware of the contract, the separate contracts. Um, so in the meantime, I want to get a hold of Chris. I'm going to try and get a hold of Chris, and maybe we can do something together to, from our community to kind of put some pressure on these guys so that'll help to push it along. That's kind of where we're at with everything. Um, I mean, we were doing backflips thinking we had everything sewed up with this contract. But, and they threw the next thing at us. We have to deal with the province now, so. So just, uh, and again, uh, Jeff, I know we've uh, had, you know, pretty good communication back and forth. So wherever we can play a role, please uh, let us know. I think uh, Christopher, as well as Tammy has been uh, in contact with you um, just on, on some of these challenges and where we could further assist in pressuring and asserting more pressure to get it done quicker. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we, um, if you can maybe touch on the plan, like the overall plan, once all this contract stuff is figured out and, all, and we're rolling, who's going like first, what's the plan of getting fiber down lines and so forth? Okay, what we have in, on the go, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in uh, solo cable, which um, they're going to put two crews on. One's going to head down fourth line and one would head up towards Miles's place. Um, him being a major investor, he's been putting pressure on me. He needs a fiber connect. So we're going to kind of have one go east, one go west. And then we're, we're negotiating with a third contractor to come in and do Chiefswood back in around fifth line. And then uh, just basically take road by road kind of deal. Okay, now for that, uh, Jeff, and again, I think we did have conversation as well as in terms of we were getting inquiries from the boundary lines of obviously, you know, on the, the credit First Nation. Um, and I think there was about a total of about 40 homes, if I'm not mistaken, or more. Um, but again, I think those, I think we've rectified that situation. Uh, we did that in our last check-in, so I'm not sure if you have any further comments on that. Um, not right now, but um, I'm not too thrilled about Rogers coming in here in any sense or form. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. We'll we'll deal with that down the road. But they better be under the understanding that when time comes, we're gonna we're gonna push them out of here. Well, I think it's all on the understanding at this point is we're as as uh, your investors pressuring you, we have community members, especially those who have access to, uh, you know, to high speed and across the road. So, I mean, they're saying, why can't we, they have that and when their neighbors across the road has it. So I think at the end of the day, it's, we're all pushing towards the same goal. And I, uh, I'm hopeful that again, we can continue to push as quickly as we can to get this project complete. Well, another alternative I did. I did um, negotiate with uh, Rogers Mobile and um, what they're going to do is put up on our tower here at the office here. They're going to put up their equipment. Um, they're going to be able to uh, broadcast 5G off of here 
four and five G, I guess it would be. Um, so that would help that people would be able to access the people that have Rogers services as far as telephone. We'll have a better connection now. Um, that's supposed to happen over the next couple of months. So that would be another another um, venue there for people to access high speed. Yeah, that's a, that's that's some that's some good news. I know, I know. There's a, there's always a one spot down six line where my my calls just drop. <laughs> so the signal uh, the signal issue definitely uh, is is issues in some parts of the territory. Uh, I'm going to open the floor up to any further uh, questions or comments for Jeff. Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing any questions or comments at this point, so I will look to a motion mover and seconder to accept uh, Jeff's verbal update in relation to our internet project. Moved by Michelle, seconder. I will. Second by Carrie. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Okay, uh, Nyawa and Jeff for joining us this evening. And again, uh, please uh, just keep uh, keep in contact with Tammy in, the, in our office, and we'll see what, what we can come up with. Absolutely, we're, we're we're coming through the community, so everybody, hang on, we'll be there. Yes. <laughs> we we need some patience. Yeah, thanks, yes. Jeff. Okay, take care. All right, you as well. Have a good evening. Okay, Council, I'm going to continue moving along our agenda here. Our next item is in uh, relation. So I just want to check with my comments. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. okay, so I'm looking to the minutes. Uh, February 28th. I'll move them. It's Sherilyn. Okay, it's moved by Sherilyn, seconded by Helen. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to this set of minutes? As you'll notice, we have two sets of minutes. Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Recommendation 5-2, which is to adopt the general council minutes of March 14th. Moved by Nathan, seconded by Helen. Further questions or comments to those sets, set of minutes? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, I know there's gonna be upcoming, uh, you'll see and notice uh, multiple reports upcoming uh, in relation to different um, events the counselors will be attending. So that I don't believe we have any at this uh, point in time. However, that will lead us into uh, scheduling. Uh, as we know, um, the Assembly of First Nations uh, Spring Assembly is upcoming uh, April 3rd through to the 5th. You'll notice on the scheduling there, the Ontario caucus sessions um, will also be happening during or prior to, uh, and we'll again uh, look to uh, the leadership council call on the Sunday or, or the meeting on the Sunday. So the, I'm going to be going in uh, a little bit earlier than the assembly starts. However, we do need uh, to see who would like to attend with myself through uh, looking to a counselor. Anybody available to attend in Ottawa? the uh, a special, or rather the Special Chiefs Assembly, April 3rd to the 5th. I know we will have, I will be accompanied by a couple of our, of our staff as well, just for tech, any technical, because I know I am part of, a, I think, two resolutions. Any interest, Council? Any availability, Helen? Okay. I'll look to add. Oh, well, nobody else wants to go. Okay. I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Um, usually, Nate, I think you're you're kind of around that area. Anyways, are you going to be? Yeah. Okay. So I'll look to a resolution for myself and Helen to attend the special uh, chiefs uh, assembly April third to fifth in Ottawa. Moved by Michelle, seconder. Second by Nathan. Further questions or comments? Oh. Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. 
that does complete our agenda for this evening's open session of general counsel. Uh, at this point in time, I will look for a mover to adjourn. Moved by Nathan, seconder. Chief, do we need a wave second reading on that last motion? Oh, my apologies. Thank you for that. Actually, I'm going to hold off. Thanks, Carrie. If I can hold off on adjournment and look to second reading waving. Moved by Michelle, seconder. Seconder for second reading. Yeah, I will. Second by, second by Nathan. All in favor? Any opposed? See your hearing and motion is carried. Now we will look to a mover and seconder to adjourn. Moved by Nathan. Seconder. Second by Michelle. All in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, so thank you, Nyawa, everyone, for joining us this evening on our general council meeting. I hope you have a great uh, evening. Take care.